I'm Mark Collier with the Open Infra Foundation, Sparky Collier on Twitter, and I will be joined just a few moments with Jonathan Bryce and Tariq Perez, and we're here to talk about building the next decade of open infrastructure with all of you and the global community from around the world. Now, we are 11 years in since we started OpenStack of a multi-decade mission. We're trying to build software communities that write software that runs in production. And across this last 11 years, there have been so, so many advances, so much progress uh, over and over again. The community has produced on-time releases. And in recent years, we've helped build communities that are producing software that runs adjacent to OpenStack. And so this mission is just getting started. And we're going to work with all of you as we look ahead to the future. And we now have millions of cores in production managed by OpenStack and other open source software. And so when we think about this next decade of open infrastructure and the key challenges that we want to work with all of you and members from over 180 countries that are part of this foundation now, see that these are some of the areas that we think are going to be the most important, the hardest problems that we want to solve together. You know, first of all, there is more open source now than ever. That trend will only continue. That's a very good thing, but it also brings hard work and challenges, making it all work together. If you're looking at OpenStack Cloud today, it contains many other open source components. And so that trend will continue. We as the Open Infra Foundation are here to help uh, make all that work together with the community. Um, hardware diversification. You see many technologies that traditionally were maybe in cell phones or client side computers moving into the data center. So things like GPUs, FPGAs, ARM architectures, and I'm sure there will be many new architectures not even invented yet or that are in the, in the labs right now. And that is something that creates more challenges and more innovation opportunities at the software layer, right? So the infrastructure software needs to evolve to enable and support and give everyone the ability to harness the power of all these new technologies on the hardware side. Um, we also see deployment diversification. So it's not just technologies moving into the data center. We have technologies moving out of the data center and, and towards the edge. And so we have everything from hyp hyperscale to IoT, edge, uh, micro scale, you know, every different deployment methodology you can think about in terms of the, the size of the deployments and connecting those all together, that's creating a lot of challenges for us to tackle together. And lastly, I'll just mention that uh, a lot of the governments around the world are waking up to cloud computing and seeing how important it is for there to be a lot of uh, diversity of choices, data sovereignty, privacy. You see new laws coming on the scene all the time from around the world. And that creates new opportunities and demands on the software we create together as a community so that we can enable all of these markets. And so the foundation is evolving and has been for some time, but we're really taking the next step this year. And specifically, earlier this year, the OpenStack Foundation became the Open Infrastructure Foundation or Open Infra for short. And so that's a really important transition. It's still very much about supporting OpenStack, but the world is so much broader now. There's so much more open source out there, uh, which is a good thing, but it, it changes what all we're working on to tackle it together. So today, uh, the Open Infra Foundation is the home of open infrastructure, and you see that in the projects we host. So not just OpenStack, but Airship, Starling X, Kata Containers, Zool, Open Infra Labs. So we'll be talking about some of these examples as we as we go. And as a foundation, you know, our role is to build communities that write software that runs in production. And one of the ways that we build and support communities is through events. So we've had many, many uh, OpenStack summits and open infrastructure summits. Next year, we are hoping to return to in-person open, uh, open infrastructure summits once again. But in the meantime, we have uh, supporting many great events like this one and uh, including a weekly show we now have, we'll be talking about in a minute, called Open Infra Live. And uh, we also have our, our PTGs, another one coming up soon. So those are the, the, 
project team gatherings where the developer communities as well as operators get together and work on upcoming releases of the software. So these are some of the things that we're doing as a foundation and none of that would be possible without the incredible ecosystem of companies that are members of the foundation. And if your company wants to become a member, you can go to openinfra.dev slash join. But just this year, when we launched uh, as the Open Infrastructure Foundation, we had more platinum members now than we've ever had in the history of our foundation. So the momentum is really strong. And that's because, again, there's are big problems to tackle. So if you look at who some of the new platinum members are, we have Facebook. They know something about operating infrastructure at scale, right? So they have incredible engineers that are joining uh, these communities and helping bring their expertise. We also have Ant Group. So they operate Alipay, the largest payment processor in the world. Billions of transactions. They're using Kata containers. Again, bring in their expertise. So when we think about all these different companies and what they're doing, it's because there's a huge market and each of them see the value in working together rather than alone in silos. And that's the power of open source. And that's what we as a foundation are helping to bring together so we can all coll collaborate on this open infra uh, work. Now, what you may be wondering or asking is what exactly is open infra? So I'm going to turn it around and ask all of you pop quiz. Is it A, a global community writing open source software for infrastructure? Is it B, infrastructure powered by open source software? Or is it C, a movement started with OpenStack and now backed by a foundation with 110,000 members, 700 plus companies in 187 countries? Well, of course, it's going to be a trick question, and you probably figured out it's all the above. So when we talk about open infrastructure, it's really not one thing. It is the community. It's all of you. It's the participation. It's the output of that participation, which is software, and the ultimate output, which is running in production. We don't do any of this without that end goal in mind. Everything we do is to get into production, and that doesn't happen right away. You start a new project. It takes some time. But that is where we're always aiming. And so in speaking of, of the software in production, this is just a few examples of how with each of these projects that we support as a foundation, we have massive users in production. I mentioned the Ant Group example with Kata Containers. So this is a secure container project. I encourage you to learn more about it if you're interested in containers and security, which almost everyone is these days. You know, if you take a company like Walmart, They've been running OpenStack for many years, and now as they increase their investment, increase the footprint, they're closing in on a million cores of compute managed by OpenStack. That is incredible production uh, proof point for OpenStack at scale. Verizon, they have a radio access network that runs Starling X, which is a project that combines OpenStack and Kubernetes. Very popular combination, right? Lots of people are running OpenStack and Kubernetes today probably the most co popular combination out there for open infrastructure that we see. And Verizon's a great example. And they're taking that with Starling X into the 5G network space. So they're running in production with a 5G network today. Volvo is running Azul for their CICD, major auto manufacturer. And MuralNet is a really interesting nonprofit. They're running Magma, which is a new mobile uh, core, packet core project that came out of Facebook and now has a large ecosystem around it. And so when you think about these trends, why is this, this happening? I mean, it, it's recent data uh, survey showed that 99% of code bases now contain open source software. So open source one, this is great. This is a, a far a different scenario than when we started OpenStack 11 years ago, if you can believe that. But uh, that's a really good thing, but it also brings new challenges. And so our job at the Open Infra Foundation, no surprise, is to focus on the infrastructure. So we're not trying to uh, host thousands of open source projects for anything and everything. We are focused on infrastructure. So we're talking about infrastructure for hybrid cloud. So private cloud, public cloud. There's also a growing footprint of public clouds powered by OpenStack all around the world. A lot of people don't know about that, but it's it's kind of the, the best kept secret in OpenStack. Huge public cloud footprint all over the world. Um, and of course, private clouds and hybrid. Now we see also new demands for 
infrastructure uh, software to enable container uh, native applications on top, right? And edge computing and AI and machine learning, CI, CD. So each of these things together um, generates a massive market, uh, many, many billions of dollars. And so that's that's really where we're, we're focused as a foundation. Now, we know that um, there's more to, to, you know, running infrastructure than just the software bits themselves, the, the lines of Python or Go or Rust or whatever it may be. The operations is really where uh, a lot of the challenges come in. And what we are working on as a foundation is trying to enable more operators to share what challenges they've encountered and how they overcame those challenges. So as a foundation, you know, we build communities who write software that runs in production, but that getting to production piece that's so important it involves a lot of knowledge sharing, right? There's so many decisions to make when you're deploying infrastructure with open source software and configuration options, et cetera. So enabling that information sharing and collaboration is a big part of what the Open Infra Foundation is focused on. And so uh, next, I want to actually bring on Jonathan Bryce and Tariq Karez to go over some real world examples of users who are running in production with uh, open source software like OpenStack and, and many others. So welcome, welcome to uh, the, uh, the you know, y'all. So let's talk about Line first. Thanks, uh, Mark. Um, Line is a, is a great example of uh, what you just mentioned around uh, engaging with a very large community and being able to leverage their, their collective uh, experience in, uh, in addressing the various challenges that you can run into. Um, so Lion is running a very large deployment of OpenStack. Um, they're running more than 67,000 virtual machines, 50,000 bare metal servers, uh, more than 350 Kubernetes clusters. And uh, they're using all that programmable infrastructure in order to uh, deliver new services to their end users faster than they used to, um, decreasing their, their deployment times from one week to uh, a bit less than 10 minutes. And uh, another way Line has been engaging with the community is by sharing their experience running those large-scale deployments. So they joined the large-scale SIG, which is a special interest group in OpenStack, uh, gathering operators that operate large deployments of OpenStack so that they can discuss operational issues. And one of the things that they, they discussed is um, how they scale RabbitMQ, which is a common um, bottleneck in scaling to, uh, towards a larger-scale deployment. And they've been not only um, sharing that experience, but also sharing the tools that they've been building in order to um, to um, uh, monitor that 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 scaling pain point. Um, and so they've been they've been contributing code to OpenStack um, to able to be able to instrument um, th this bottleneck and and be able to drive their scaling strategy around RabbitMQ. That's a great example of uh, how we can engage and all together uh, get better at solving those operational problems. When you talk about get together and all work on solving those problems, I think that one of the, the great things about open source communities are that they're made up of so many different kinds of organizations all working on the same problem. So it's not just uh, you know, technology companies and vendors. It's not just users. It's not just kind of developers that are independently contributing. It's it's all of those uh, types of people coming together to work on these problems. And a project that we've really seen that happening is in Kata Containers. Kata Containers, as Mark mentioned earlier, is one of the projects that we host within the Open Infrastructure Foundation. And Kata Containers provides a secure runtime environment for container execution. So you can use it to execute Kubernetes pods or to deploy Docker images and do that in a way where you have isolation around those containers and um, have extra control over the security as well as what types of hardware or networks um, are available to those containerized workloads. So a really powerful piece of, of technology in Kata containers. And one of the things that has, uh, has been happening um, with Kata containers is AMD has gotten involved to integrate their SEV, which is their 
uh, their virtualization encryption technology into Kata containers. And what this does is it enables you as a user to run Kata containers on top of AMD hardware and encrypt the memory and all of the work that's happening within a container so that even if someone had physical access to that server, they would not be able to view your data and, and access your data. So this gets into the realm of, of what uh, is sometimes called confidential computing now. And, uh, and it's great to see organizations like AMD working upstream in open source communities like Kata Containers to, uh, to enable that and make it, uh, make it possible to, to turn um, these environments that, that a lot of people are deploying now, container environments and Kubernetes environments, into something that we can run in an encrypted mode uh, and enable confidential computing for really important and critical workloads. So I mentioned the large scale SIG earlier and uh, Mark mentioned the Open Infra Live um, series of events. Um, so Open Infra Live is a weekly show, um, weekly live show that we run every Thursday uh, with conversations around open infrastructure. And one of the shows that, um, that show up in that series is, um, is the large scale OpenStack show, which is actually produced by the large scale SIG itself. And in those episodes, operators of large scale OpenStack deployments get together to discuss uh, one specific operational issue that they have. Uh, and one of those episodes, um, we, we had one around spare capacity and that was driven by CERN, the, the European Center for Nuclear Research, uh, which runs a very large OpenStack private cloud in order to um, process the results of the scientific experiments that they're running there. And um, one, one interesting pain points that they have is how they handle spare capacity. They need spare capacity in order to be able to process those science experiments, but at the same time, they need to keep it at a minimal, at minimum because uh, of the constraints of a public resource institution, institution in terms of funding. So, um, uh, Belmiro Moreira from CERN shared his experience on uh, handling spare capacity, but he was joined by other operators that has slightly different um, problems around spare capacity, including public cloud operators like uh, City Network or Open Telecom Cloud, but also a very large uh, private cloud at Verizon or um, um, a, a large op operational um, uh, deployment of OpenStack at InMotion that runs a, more of a data center as a service offering. And they all have slightly different concerns around spare capacity and getting them all together to confront their opinions was really, uh, really interesting for us. Then we have, uh, speaking of Horizon, Jonathan. You're muted. Sorry about that. Within Verizon, another great use case that Mark mentioned earlier was their nationwide virtual radio access network uh, that they recently deployed uh, for their 5G service. And um, this is a, a, a virtualized RAN that is running on top of Starling X. Um, this is a, a great example of a kind of a modern um, edge computing use case for a really critical workload running the 5G network uh, for one of the top tier um, network operators in the United States. Um, this was, uh, was something that uh, was a really exciting use case to hear about for me. I think that edge computing is a trend that is really just getting started. And I think that as we go over this next decade, we're gonna see um, so much compute power get moved out of central data centers and out to edge locations, whether that's within mobile networks or industrial facilities or um, all kinds of smart city type use cases. Uh, edge computing is going to be an absolutely huge driver for compute over the next decade. And I, I love how one of the things that we've seen in, in the past decade is where open source has really driven some of these new trends, whether those Trends were uh, virtualization and cloud computing or containerization and container orchestration. And now we see that with, with edge computing too. So um, you know, Verizon uh, being able to, to uh, get their 5G network to market on top of Starling X, on top of 
um, open source components like OpenStack and Kubernetes, I think it, it really um, is, is a huge example of taking these open source infrastructure components and running them in production in a very serious way. And, uh, edge computing is clearly one of the major trends that is driving open infrastructure today, 11 years in. Uh, another one is digital sovereignty. Uh, we are seeing more and more countries or uh, groups of countries having concerns around running uh, workloads in jurisdictions that they don't have control over. Uh, and so we see a new trend of deployments, especially in, uh, in Europe, in Asia, in South America, where um, there is new public clouds being created every day based on OpenStack to be able to have a local offering uh, that offers data locality, digital sovereignty. Um, and in one of the Open Infra Live episode, we had um, two public cloud providers, City Network and Binero, which are both based in Sweden, um, joined by Kurt Garloff from the Sovereign Cloud Stack Initiative and Pierre Grandlier from uh, the Gaia X uh, Consortium. And they all discussed those concerns around digital sovereignty and how open source plays a role in solving that, that very complex issue for, uh, for, uh, for uh, governments and countries today. And finally, we get to um, another good example of the large scale OpenStack show. Um, we don't really shy away from discussing pain points. Um, once you get a, a bunch of operators together to, to discuss, um, they often end up discussing uh, what, what is the most, um, the, no, the most notable painful pain point in operating OpenStack, which is upgrading the infrastructure. It's always it's always difficult the lower in the stack you are. And so um, uh, they we got together people from Vexhost, from OVH, from CERN again, from Blizzard, from Workday to um, expose how they handle upgrades, um, how they um, got, got beyond those pain points and um, into the realm of easier operations. And so that was a, a very interesting show. It actually ended up being two shows because we we, uh, we got short on time on the first one. Um, and so I, uh, I encourage you to, to watch those shows if you, if you can on Open, open Infra Live. So Open Infra Live, we've mentioned it a couple of times. And uh, it is, as Mark said earlier, a, a weekly series that we launched this year to, uh, to bring the community together. And it's something that the foundation is producing um, with the help of our, uh, of our member companies, as well as developers in the community and users in the community. And we cover all kinds of topics from, um, from working together on solving production deployment issues to thinking about where we should take this in the future to exploring um, brand new use cases. So it's a really fun series that, uh, that I encourage everybody to check out. It, uh, we air it every Thursday at 1400 UTC. And you can go see past episodes, um, see the uh, what the schedule is for the coming weeks, and submit ideas for future episodes at openinfra.live. I see Mark has rejoined us. So thanks for giving us a chance to talk about some of the users that, uh, that we've had um, kind of speaking in the community over the last year. Are there any of your favorite users that we missed, Mark? Oh, wow. Well, there's so many users, you know, we have many, many millions of cores, uh, compute cores managed around the world by OpenStack. Uh, you know, one that comes to mind is probably Yahoo. Um, you know, the whole Yahoo network of, of websites, uh, some of the most trafficked in the world, they have just in that use case, they have millions of cores of that one company for all those websites. I think they have 400,000 physical servers. So that is definitely infrastructure at scale. And um, another one that comes to mind, we, we just had an open in for a live episode a few days ago that was about NVIDIA. I believe they're a sponsor of this event. And that NVIDIA is running with Ironic, the OpenStack bare metal project in production. So there's a couple that come to mind, but you know, having this show every single week, open in for live gives us the chance to talk to so many users and we want to talk to more. So if you want to, uh, come on an episode, you have an idea for an episode, uh, or you just want to go back and watch the past episodes, 
we've got the URL here, openinfra.live, and there's a button on there to, to submit idea episodes. But yeah, we, there's so many users and a lot more we want to bring on the show going forward. So with that, um, I think that we will uh, just invite everyone to participate, not just in the weekly show, but in the foundation, in the communities. You know, uh, if you go to openinfra.dev slash join, you can join the foundation. We do support and build communities who write software that runs in production. We've been talking about a lot of those examples today. So as an individual, it's free. We have 110,000 individuals that are members today from over 180 countries. We want to want you to join as well. And if your company wants to support the mission of the foundation, you can learn more about how to do that as well on the same the same place, openinfra.dev slash join. So that is a great place to start if you're not already involved and you want to learn more. Um, and of course, we also invite you to get involved in other upcoming events, such as the Open Infra Day Asia event. If you go to 2021.openinfra.asia. You will learn more about that event. That is a collaboration of many different user groups throughout Asia, many countries collaborating together. And that's the way we like to do it. And so with that, I will just say thank you. And I hope you have a good time with Open Infra. Thanks.